In Greythorpe Dock in the northeast of England, a giant cathedral of steel lies on its side. It's the beginning of June 1974, and Greythorpe One, the first oil production platform for the North Sea, is almost complete. It's taken 18 months, 2,500 men, and 20,000 tons of steel to put together this intricate tracery of metal soon to be anchored to the seabed. To get there, it'll have to be towed 250 miles. When it gets there, it'll be pinned 250 feet into the sandstone under the North Sea and will be standing in 350 feet of water. The northeast of England is traditionally a shipbuilding area, but for the men who've worked on this project, Greythorpe One has been a new experience. How do they feel about it? Well, uh, it looks gigantic from two or three miles away even. And when you do get to it, you know, it's unbelievable, really, the size. It really is fantastic. To me, it's a work of art. It's uh, a good sign for the tradesmen and everything in the northeast of England. At first, it was just a job. And now, they don't realise what they have done, some of them, because they're working on it every day, and it's just become the rig. But when any visitors come down, they stand there and look up and say, Good God, the size of that, how do you work up there? Up there is 300 feet from the ground, and because of the size of the project, two of the largest revolving cranes in the world were specially built to assist in the construction of Greythorpe One. Each crane stands 400 feet high and is capable of lifting 800 tons. Essential when you see the size of the lower legs of the platform. The whole structure rests on the 30-foot diameter tanks of a flotation raft which will take her out into the North Sea and slide her down onto the seabed. Building her has been the overall responsibility of one man, David Hainstock. Why has Greythorpe One been such an undertaking? Basically its size and its weight. I think you need to get it slightly into perspective. Um, it's about twice as high as Big Ben and weighs about four times as much as the Eiffel Tower. It's pretty enormous in terms of size. What's the future of the yard after Greythorpe One? Well, as soon as this one floats out, uh, we have to commence the construction. In fact, we've really begun construction of the second one. I'm pretty confident that providing we maintain the same level of completion dates, then we're going to get a third and a fourth and right the way through the rest of this decade. The task of getting Greythorpe One out to sea and into an upright position is one where the slightest mistake could be disastrous. Understandably, it's been left in the unemotional hands of a computer program. The man in charge is Roy Jenkins, an American with 20 years in the oil industry behind him. Where were the techniques acquired which will be used on the installation? It's an extension, actually, you might say a spin-off of the space program. A lot of the basic techniques and, uh, that were developed uh, for the uh, moonshots and space program have been uh, refined and adjusted into a civilian uses. The computer monitors each individual tank and tells us uh, whether that tank is dry or how much water is in it. Uh, it also tells us the uh, pitch and roll, the attitude of the uh, structure while it's under tow, while it's going down. How does this compare with other projects? Well, this is the largest by far that we've ever done. It's a new frontier in the offshore construction. June 25th, the platform is complete and the final touches are given to a dredging operation which has scoured out the channel down which Greythorpe One will be taken by eight tugs on her journey to the sea. The man who will tow her there is Captain Bill Strickland. What's complicated about this one? It's large, it's, uh, it's not a ship shape, it's very high in the air which means it has tremendous wind effects, it's subject to tides, it's never been done before, it's a first anywhere. And I think the main thing is its sheer size. Um, I think probably the only comparable thing that's been towed out is um, a large concrete tank from Norway, which was probably bigger in weight, but this is probably far more complex in the number of individual marine operations that have to take place in um, a very short period of time. 
June 26th, in the evening, 150 million gallons of water start to flood the dock. It'll be 36 hours before the dock is filled and the journey to the North Sea started. June 29th, dawn. Greythorpe 1 is on the move. Very slowly, very gently, she's winched out into the river where the tugs are ready to start her on the 250 mile journey into the North Sea. It's a complicated operation involving a left turn and then a right turn as the platform picks its way daintily through the deepest part of the channel. First in today's program, the big operation of towing the oil production platform Great Old Wand from the Tees to its base in the Portis oil field. Staying as close as possible to the coast, the tugs tow their strange charge at over four knots, hoping that the weather will be kind to them. The command vessel has the computer centre on board, and this is constantly monitoring the platform's condition, as all the latest information on wind, tides and weather is nervously watched over. The North Sea is not the world's most hospitable ocean. The fury of its storms is legendary. So far, however, the weather has held, the sea is kind, and the tugs grind remorselessly on to the Forties oil field, the platform's destination. July 2nd, weather still good. Tugs, floating cranes and platform finally arrive, sunset, and the last night that Greythorpe One will spend on her side. July 3rd, no problems, a calm, fine day. The radio-controlled valves in the flotation raft are gradually opened by the computer on the command vessel, and the stern tanks start to fill. Like a timid bather, Greythorpe One inclines her bulk towards the sea. For two and a half hours, she edges nervously a gentle seven degrees into the water. And then, in 30 seconds, the final plunge. It'll be another three hours before Greythorpe One is finally upright on the seabed. By the end of August, all the piles will be in place and the decks installed. 1975, and the first oil will be flowing through her steel veins. And by then, there will be others, for Greythorpe One is simply 